Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. I got a new topic today that kind of grabbed my eye. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where you see the WNBA and how the players have kind of shifted their approach to dealing with situations that are involved with uh, potential CBA negotiations, along with a, num- a number of other topics um that are for lack of better words they feel stronger they feel emboldened to make demands to almost sound like nba players and i'll tell you why but before we jump in thank you so much for your continued support of this channel greatly appreciate you be sure to like subscribe and follow and become a member of our channel and check out our merch line as well as where we growing a merch line also the links will be in the bio and be sure to subscribe to rudy's rant as well on youtube let's talk about this oh yeah this is rudy's rant where we talk facts over feelings as you know so let's get into it WNBA players have opted out of their CBA and they are, there's a top conversation of potentially having a work stoppage. I think that'll be a massive mistake on their part, but they feel like they're strong. They feel like they're tough and they feel all these things because of someone, because of one person. The success of Caitlin Clark in year one has given them the courage, the confidence to make demands, to say things that they probably wouldn't have said last year or the year before, the year before that, but they're saying them now. Neko Gumake um, recently was on a podcast, I think with Sue Bird and Megan Rapinoe, and she made a couple of comments about the rosters in the WNBA. And while I don't disagree with her, because I think there should be 15 players on every roster, just like there's 15 players, on NBA rosters, you do have to account for potential injuries, et cetera, and, and not have to search for players. I, I think that also is beneficial to, I don't know, college basketball players who are turning pro, that you don't have to cut potential, you know, like cut draft picks, which you'd rather not do. I mean, I've seen drafts where there's literally no one left from the draft in the last five, six years in the league right now. I think having more roster spots makes sense. Uh, So you can't listen to people say, well, there's so few roster spots. Well, if you have 15, then it makes sense. The the number is 12. I did not know that until recently. I thought it was 15. As I've said before, I'm no WNBA expert when it comes to to the to numbers. I don't I'm learning it as I go myself. I admit that. But Neko Guma came in some comments. I'm going to play them for you and I'm going to respond to it. Um, I do worry, though, a little bit about, um, I guess, volume. And I mean, number of games and number of spots. I feel like, you know, we played a 40-game season. That was a lot. We had 11 people on our team. That was a lot. Yeah. Um, And I know next year we're going to have 44 games. 44 games with still only 11 rostered. As the minimum and max, you know, Basically. so you can have 12. 12. You can okay. 12 is the max. Um, I believe, yeah, 12 is the max. And I just really, I really feel strongly that with more games, we need more spots. I mean, I felt like we needed more spots when we were playing 38 games, 36 games. Like, I really felt that way. Um, and I, I don't see how that is not included in the conversation around growth. I just don't see how that makes. Um, So before I laugh at her reasoning, let me say I do agree with her. 15 game, 15 players per team makes sense. But for the love of God, you sound like an NBA player right now. You sound like these NBA players who are holier than now, who are who have turned into just prima donnas and complain about everything. Did you just say on a podcast that 40 games is a lot with 11 players. I mean, I, I, I mean, let me take the wax out of my ears. Did you really just say that 40 games is a lot for, 
for players over. Let me check this real fast. I I I I mean, I could have swore. I don't know, man. Am I am I growing in my old age and thought of forty games? As a paid professional athlete in basketball is a lot. Did you really? Neko Gumake, I, I, I don't know what drug she's on, but the women's basketball season started in May, May 14th. Regular season started May 14th around that time. The season ended September 19th, regular season. So May to June, June to July, July to August, August to September. Four months. Four months. If you include the two preseason games that start beginning of, the, of May, four and a half months. In that four and a half months, there was a two and a half week or three week break. For example, I'm looking at the Indiana Fever schedule. They played their, actually it's a four week break. July 17th was their last game before the All-Star break. I know the All-Star game was that weekend. And the next game they played was August 16th. So in that four and a half month period, and I'm not including the teams that went to the championship naturally, in that four and a half month period, you had a month off. Neko Gumake was not on the Olympic team. She was on the All Star team. So you had three and a half weeks off during your four and a half month season because they were eliminated in two games in the, in the WNBA playoffs. And you're going to sit here and you're going to tell me that the 11 players you had on your team wasn't enough. Am I am I hearing this right? Am I crazy? I, I mean, is there something that I'm missing here? You might play three games a week. You might play four. And then you had a month off. A lot? Is that for real? You played 40 games. You didn't play 82. And I still agree with you. You should have 15 players, but not for the reasons that you state. For the reasons of getting more players in the league, allowing players to come to the WNBA rather than going to Europe where, number one, they're going to make more money off the rip. But to actually bring the talent to your league, that is the reason. You want to keep as much of the talent, the best talent in the world, in your league. That's what makes you the best league in the world. But you guys let 36 players go abroad every single year who should probably be in the WNBA, who might not be ready today, but with development would become ready and could be the future stars of your league. You don't have a G League, and I get it. So you absolutely need to use those three spots extra that I would recommend to develop players who are really good college players, but who could become better with proper development and not have them go play in Europe and look like superstars. So when people are questioning, well, why the hell is this player playing in Europe? That player could play right here. But her logic is that 40 games is a lot. And she wanted it to be up at 36 and 38. And now we're talking about 44. Oh, my God. She's going to be exhausted. And you know what happens when you add more games? You're going to add more weeks to the season. You're not going to have the season end in September. You're going to have the season end in probably October. You should stretch it out a little bit more. That's reality. But don't sit here and tell me. But the reason that you need more players is because you play so many games. In fact, you played probably as many games when you were at Stanford. I, I, I and, and you didn't have, you didn't play your 15th man, 15th woman. Like no teams play their 
you know, tip, most teams don't play their 10th, 11th, and 12th players on the active roster. They don't play very much. Neka Agumake in college played 38 games as a freshman, 38 games as a sophomore, 33 as a junior, and 36 as a senior. She's been playing this schedule her whole life. Why is she acting like this is so flipping exhausting? And you want to know what makes it more impressive when you do that in college? She didn't go to bumfuck school that doesn't care about academics. She went to Stanford. She went to one of the 10 or five best universities in the nation academically. And she graduated from Stanford. So she had to carry an academic load while playing 38 games, 38 games, 33 games, 36 games. I'm sorry. That to me is a lot more difficult than playing a 40 game regular season in the WNBA, staying in four star hotels, flying out, charter, being fed, being given whatever you need. I mean, they still get the, the necessities of, of any athlete. They get stipends, they get money for you know food, all that stuff. It's not like they're it's not like they're destined to, it's not like they're staying in a Howard Johnson or a Days Inn. They might not be staying in the St. Regis or, or, or Ritz Carlton, but they're staying at a bare minimum, a Marriott, a Hyatt, a Hilton. They're not staying in a freaking flea bag motel. They're not having to rent cars to go to games. Like, this is insane. But again, I agree with what I agree with her, the, the fact that they need more players per team, but not based. Just say you need more players per team. Please don't make this excuse about 40 games. So, what are we going to see next in the WNBA? Load management? Are you going to follow the suit of the NBA and start resting 10 games a season? Because you just don't feel like playing? They feel this level of empowerment because of Caitlin Clark. Everything will always go back to any comment made about wanting more this year will always revert to why they feel that they could have done that this year. It's because of Caitlin Clark. They used metrics she created and they create, they used them as their own when they were really hers and no one else's. This is lunacy, folks. I, I'm listening to someone who in the very near future is going to sit here and tell you, and although she'll be out of the league in, in the, probably next year or two, <clears throat> but sit here and tell you that they're going to be doing load management. Here's the reality. As you expand your league and you want growth, guess what's going to happen with that growth? The expenses are going to go up. More teams are going to have bad attendance numbers. The talent will thin. Look at the NBA game. The NBA game is not a good product. I've said it a thousand times. I think the NBA game sucks. And that's how bad the WNBA, I think, that, and the WNBA game is 10 times worse, which shows how bad that one is. This is not the basketball that I grew up to. And people say, well, it's a new age. Yeah, it's a new age, and it's bad basketball. Watching teams shoot 40, 50 threes a game, it's not good ball. Calling ridiculous touch fouls, not good ball. Calling elbow inadvertent elbows on a rebound because someone's put their face in the way of, of, of your elbow coming down off of a rebound, that's not a good that's not good ball. Allowing someone to go underneath you while you're turning your body, and el and your elbow hits someone in the face because they got underneath you, like you really can't turn your body. That's not good ball. This is not the ball that I grew up to. And I and I and, and but in fact, actually, the WNBA game is more of the ball that I grew up to, which is why I'm actually able to watch it, despite the fact they can't make layups, despite the fact that they shoot tremendously poorly overall in comparison, despite having a smaller basketball. Because there's purity in that game. Where they still use real screen roll. They still actually post people up. They still look for mid-range jump shots and things of that nature. Where the NBA game is just driving, kick, driving, kick, driving, kick, driving, kick, driving, kick, driving, kick. Passable layup, but driving, kick. 
You have a wide open layup. No, I'm gonna kick it out because I'm gonna shoot, we're gonna shoot a three. <clears throat> the, the game in the NBA is soft. The players are soft. They become completely soft. And and but and I and listening to her, that's the direction that the WNBA is going. You're tired after 40 basketball games. God, dog. <clears throat> I'm sorry. If I was a pro, I mean, 40 basketball games, Jesus Christ. I can't, I, I, with a month off, no less. That's what makes it worse. This also includes the Olympics. You had a month off. A month. So you played 40 games in – you didn't play it in three and a half months. You played it in four and a half months. I, I, I just think that's ridiculous. And, in fact, next year when there's no Olympics, the games will stretch out because there won't be a three-week, three-and-a-half-week break. So you'll have less games per week, which will benefit you. At the same time, as you expand this league, your expansion ideas, your expenses are going to go up as a league. Money will be divided against, amongst more teams, which lowers your revenue as a franchise. Attendance numbers will be down because – Caitlin Clark can only play so many places at the same damn time. Angel Reese can only play in so many places at the same damn time. And TV ratings will be based on Clark, largely. And then you got a situation in which you're going to have to play more and more and more games because they increased to 44 because you just added a team. When you add two more teams, the number's probably going to increase to 50, 52. You want to add more teams to that? When they, as, as they keep adding teams, the game count is going to keep going up. It has to in order to play each other twice a year. In order to play a team from the other, con from the, from the other conference, even though they run the rank, the, the, the seedings off of one thing, they still run games off of it seems like some some level of ge geography because not everyone plays each other three or four times because there's 12 teams and there's thir it was 40 games you divide it not everyone's playing to the same amount of times but you're going to have to increase games maybe they go more re more real ge geographically and they'll start playing teams from the opposite conferences twice a year Rather than playing them, for example, Indiana played Las Vegas three times. I'm sorry, they played them four times. Maybe they'll start playing them twice a year as an, as an out-of-conference game. Maybe they'll do that. But you're going to have more and more games. And if you want to be a legitimate sport, you're going to have more games. But sure, more players matters. But don't sit here and tell me that you're tired after 40 games. I mean, if you're... That means the product of your game is going to go even further down into the toilet if you're saying that you're that tired after 40 games. But they feel comfortable in going this direction. They feel comfortable in saying how mistreated they are. I, I they feel that they, they feel like they can get away with it. And it's all because they because Caitlin Clark has joined their league and made them feel powered, empowered, emboldened. Let me know your thoughts on this. I, I'd love to hear feedback on this uh, and, and your thoughts on how NECA's response to wanting more game, more wanting more players because 40 games felt like so much. God. Jeez. Love to hear what your thoughts are. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, ring that bell, pound that like button, and be sure to subscribe to Ruse Rant as well. Appreciate y'all. Facts over feelings. Come on now.